Well, good morning. Welcome to St Paul's Church. My name is Alex. I'm the Associate Vicar here. And we are so glad that you've come and joined us this morning. If it's your first time here, welcome. Really glad that you could tune in. If you've been a regular uh, on the journey, then really happy that you're back again. Now, today is a really special day for two reasons. Um, a sad reason, Ruth, our amazing vicar, uh, is leaving us today, uh, serenely in this time of lockdown, but she's going. And so during the service, we're going to spend a little bit of time just thanking her for her amazing ministry, hard work, love, friendship, support here at the church. Um, but we also remember today is Pentecost, which is a great festival in the church's calendar. We celebrate God pouring himself out by himself, the Holy Spirit, onto the church and filling believers with a power and a strength that comes from him. The Bible tells us at the very start of Acts chapter 2 that the disciples were gathered together. And then when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And people in Jerusalem heard them speaking in other languages, other tongues. Peter, the disciple, stood up, told them about the good news of Jesus. And Acts tells us that that day, 3,000 people became Christians and followers of Jesus. They joined the church and it's, it's the church's birthday. Now, if we were together, we would probably have a great big cake. We'd have balloons, we'd be shouting out. Uh, we're separated. So um, Milo, my cameraman and I, we have really thrown the boat out. We've got our little cake to say happy birthday to the church. So we're gonna celebrate that. And uh, I wonder after three, we could say happy birthday. We've even, no expense spare, got a party popper. So three, two, one, happy, happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we uh, just pray and uh, the madness will end and then we'll stand and sing. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of your Holy Spirit. The Spirit that reminds us that we're not alone, that you're with us, that you're in us, uh, that you fill us with your power and your courage to face anything. And so Lord, today as we celebrate Pentecost, the birth of the church, um, fill us again with that same power, that same spirit, that we would know peace in our lives and you would give us courage to proclaim you and to shine for you in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
together to pray. Can we suggest that you lift a country, a person or situation to the Lord as he puts it on your heart? Father God, we thank you that your word says that we should not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present our requests to you. Lord, thank you that you have placed all things under Jesus' feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body. Lord, this is your world. We ask that you strengthen our brothers and sisters around the world with all power according to your glorious might. We lift before you 
those around the world who go in your name to preach good news to the poor, bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim freedom for the captives, release from darkness for the prisoners, and to declare the year of the Lord's favour. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for our country, that the Spirit of the Lord would rest upon our Queen, Prime Minister and all those in authority over us. We ask you to give skillful and godly wisdom to all those in leadership across the United Kingdom. We ask that you surround the Prime Minister and Cabinet with men and women who make their hearts attentive to godly counsel and do what is right in your sight. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you, Lord for all those working so hard in the essential services during this crisis, and pray that you would strengthen them by your spirit in their inner being. As lockdown eases, we pray for peace, patience, tolerance, gentleness and self-control as we learn how to manage the changes. We ask you to inspire all those working to find a vaccine and in faith, we thank you because you are God of the breakthrough. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you for those who are the local church here at St Paul's and throughout Dorking. Thank you, Jesus, that you're always interceding for us before the Father. We thank you that you meet all our needs according to your glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So we declare this word in faith over families struggling with childcare, those in financial difficulties, those with uncertainty about employment, those who are lonely, anxious and feeling depressed. We bring into your presence, Lord, those who are unwell and those who are mourning. Help us, Lord, to be still and hear your voice so that we can minister to those around us and enable your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask you, Lord, to strengthen and give wisdom to those in leadership at St Paul's at this time of change and to surround them and their family with your arms of protection. We are united to bless and protect them all. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we thank you for Ruth and the blessing that she has been to us in the last five and a half years. We thank you for Ron and the teaching he has shared with us too. Thank you for Zoe and Phoebe and what they've brought to the family life here at St Paul's. May the Lord be your hiding place and protect you from trouble and surround you with songs of deliverance. May he instruct you and teach you in the way you should go, counsel you and watch over you all. Finally, Father, we thank you that we who dwell in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. We will say of the Lord, he is our refuge and our fortress, our God in whom we trust. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Phil and Jane, for your prayers. Well, listen, we're going to pause from our normal service and we want to spend a little bit of time uh, just giving thanks to God for Ruth Bishega, our vicar, who is leaving us after today. And um, Ruth, I know you're watching. We want to say thank you so, so much for being uh, the most extraordinary leader of this church. I've had the pleasure and the privilege of working with Ruth for the last nine months, and uh, it's been a real joy. Uh, I was talking to a member of staff a few weeks ago, and we were talking about things that we're going to miss about her. And uh, she said just that infectious enthusiasm and almost giggliness as she comes up with new creative ideas. Uh, you have come up with the most extraordinary ideas, Ruth, in the time I've been here. Uh, and I've heard many of the stories of what you've done in the past. Uh, we are going to miss you so much. We thank God for your leadership. We thank God so much for the blessing that you've been to us. And we know the blessing you're going to be to others as well across the whole of Chichester Diocese. So with that in mind, our little St Paul's goodbye. We've asked uh, a few people just to reflect back over the last six years. Um, and so thanks to Ruth for the difference that she's made in their lives. Uh, and then you're going to see a video of Ian and Paul, our church wardens, and Steve.
just giving uh, some presents to Ruth uh, earlier this week as a way of thanks on behalf of all of us as a church. So sit back and enjoy the videos. Ruth, thank you for being an awesome Bible teacher. Thank you for sharing the pulpit with so many of us and for encouraging me to have a go at preaching. Thank you for so clearly articulating what it means to be a member of the church. The Count Me In initiative really helped mature my faith and under your leadership, I've explored my own call to ministry. Thank you for being so generous in opening up your home to church family. Thank you for being a visionary leader. You've taken us on a wonderful journey with God. With his help, we will continue to be a growing community of grace and it will be a lifetime's ambition to be courageous for Christ. Ruth, that is part of your legacy to us. You have discipled us well. Thank you. Ruth, what can I say? But on behalf of the church, thank you so much for all that you have given us over the past five and a half years. It's been a real joy to have you all with us. And since you've been here, you've set up a lot of initiatives. You've done a, a huge amount and used your real energy to get lots of things going. Um, new services, um, you've inspired people to go forwards uh, for training for full-time and lay ministry. But this hasn't just been something that you've done because you feel it's ought to be done. You've had a real love for God and this has driven you to really ensure that his kingdom is here on earth. Thank you. And you've encouraged us to be a resource church and Peter has gone out from here and Tom has gone out from here and other people will go out. And I remember you saying when Peter and Tom went out from us that it was a little bit like losing an arm. And now it is sad in one way that you're leaving us. We will be sad that you have gone, but we are sure that it's God's will and that you are doing the job that he would have you do in Horsham. Thank you again. God bless you. God go with you all and please keep in touch. Hi Ruth, from all the young people at St Paul's. Thank you so much just for the incredible leader that you've been. Thank you so much for all the help and support you've given us over the last few years. You've been an incredible driving force in our church and you've really genuinely transformed us. I want to thank you personally for the opportunity to preach. You've really helped me in my worship leading and you've stood alongside me which I'm incredibly grateful for and I can't wait to see you go on to do amazing things. We'll really miss you, but we hope you really love your new job. We're all praying for you. We love you and we're going to miss you. Well, good morning. And my name is Paul and I'm one of the church wardens here at St Paul's Church. And as we stand here socially distancing in front of our wonderful church, it's my privilege to be a part of this service as we say au revoir to our fantastic vicar Ruth as she leaves St Paul's to become Bishop of Horsham. And so Ruth, it's been an absolute privilege to serve God with you during this season at St Paul's. But let's face it, we all knew this day would come. Ever since you arrived, just as we opened the church centre in 2014, we knew we had someone a bit special as our vicar. And for me, the most recent example being the incredible sermon you delivered last week from behind the wheel of your car. How do you do that? You've been a gifted, visionary, dynamic and massively inspirational leader of God's church here at St Paul's. There's not sufficient time to go through all the amazing things and the amazing ways in which you've been willing to be used by God to reinforce his teaching, his guidance and to follow his leading. We've all had to take a deep breath to keep up with you. <laughs> you've taken us on an exciting spiritual journey with God, encouraging us to focus more on him. But it is God's will for you to move on and to move to Horsham, where we know he will use your many gifts as bishop. Chichester Diocese has a lot to look forward to. And after nearly six years with us, I'm sure it won't be easy moving on. But we all know that God's hand is in this for you, Ron, Zoe and Phoebe. So you go with our blessing, but we'll miss you loads. God be with you, and may he bless you and the family richly as you embark on this new and exciting journey with him. Well, Ruth, I'm coming with uh, a few hats uh, and probably the main two will be uh, for the staff team and the way you've led uh, and inspired us, the way you pluck ideas out of the ether, <laughs> um, which has always been inspirational. But more than that, your investment uh, in team, uh, your investment in birthdays and occasions for joy, but also your investment in each one of us personally, pushing us on uh, and always pulling uh, the best out of each of us and that's something that we've all learned from 
in this time. And of course the other hat is the children's and youth hat. Um, and uh, what has been evident throughout um, is just your passion for children and young people. And I know, uh, and I'm very grateful that this is something that you're gonna carry on with you into your ministry as a bishop. And for me, uh, that is a tremendous encouragement, knowing that that um, is being held at that kind of platform. And I know our children and young people as well will be very grateful for all the opportunities that you have made for them, from preaching to leading worship, uh, to so many things where you're saying, what more can we be doing for our children and young people? So on their behalf and on the staff's team behalf, thank you for all that you brought to St Paul's in this time. So we want to send you out in the power of the Spirit, but Sounds not good. empty handed. <laughs> And so on behalf of the church family, we'd like you to accept a few gifts. And they're here on the table. I can't hand them to you, Ruth. What I'd love to do is come and give you a big hug. Yeah. But I think that would be so inappropriate. <laughs> but the gifts are here. Shall we get the, um, the other gift? Oh, wow. Now, can I just say that's to eat, not wear? Oh, my goodness. And Joe Henry. Just say thank you to Joe. Joe, come on out. Joe! Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Isn't that fantastic? Oh, my goodness. I wouldn't wear that one. <laughs> <laughs> So these are just tokens, Ruth. They're tokens of our love for you. Joe! And all you've accomplished. <gasps> oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It's sparkling in the sunshine. <laughs> oh, Joe, you're so clever. Wow. Thank you. Oh, I can't even. Oh, now, the only thing I'd say is when you have one of those of your own that you can wear, I don't care what's on your timetable, you must come back here to join with us in a stonking celebration yeah. of all you've done here. Thank you. But please open oh, the other thank gifts. Thank you. Thank you, they're just beautiful. Oh. oh, wow. Wow. Wow, that's amazing, look. And it is an original. She did it just for me. Thank you. Wow. There's not another one like that. Oh my god, it's beautiful, thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you very much. Wow, that's a lot, that's a huge gift, thank you. That's a huge gift, goodness me. That's a huge gift. That's good. That's good. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, everybody. And I, <laughs> I can't say goodbye, but um, we don't we say au revoir. We say au revoir. We'll see you soon. Thank you for everyone who's just been such an incredible support, and um, every single member of the church has just been the best, the best time of our lives, and we've loved it. And uh, we'll be back in the autumn for a proper, proper farewell, proper party. We'll get some um, something fizzy in, um, but I think I'll eat the cake before then. So uh, <laughs> the cake is going to go. <laughs> thank you very much, and no, um, thank you, God bless thank you all. You. Thank, thank you for all you've done. Oh dear. Brilliant. That's good. Before we um, end, it's right that we pray uh, for Ruth. There's a tradition in, in the church, in the early church actually, um, that as Paul and Barnabas was sent out from their church in Antioch. The church gathered together, the elders gathered together, they laid hands on them and they prayed God's blessing as they sent them out from Antioch uh, across the world as they went off on mission together. And so we can't lay hands physically on Ruth as we send her out, but we can pray God's rich blessing on her. And so again, earlier this week, uh, a number of the leaders, the ministers and the pastors of St Paul's uh, prayed this blessing over her and so right now Ruth we just want to gather around you virtually and pray God's blessing over you, your family, uh, your ministry uh, and your life ahead under God's control and God's leadership. Ruth, 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Well, this week our children's and youth groups are starting back up again. There is another episode of XL TV online. And we have groups this morning as well. If you want to find out about any of that, check out the Children's and Youth section on our website. But right now, the three groups this morning, it's time for our children and young people to head out. So off you go, guys. We'll see you there.
reading is from Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 9, verses 16 and 17. Jesus said, No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do men pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skin will burst and the wine will run out and the wineskins will be ruined. No. They pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It's it's a great privilege to be with you this morning. Uh, Those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Simon Gardner. I'm a member of St Paul's Church and one of the occasional speakers. Now this week, we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to look at three moments in history. Firstly, we're going to travel back to May the 22nd, AD 33. New beginnings, the first Pentecost. Then we're going to come forward to May the 22nd, AD 2020. New paradigms, the reshaping of our world. And thirdly, we're going to travel forwards to May the 22nd, AD 2021. And we'll look at new wineskins and the future of church in the new norm. So firstly then, let's travel back to May 22nd, AD 33. It's the most likely date of the first Pentecost, 50 days after the Jewish festival of Passover and after Jesus's crucifixion. At this time in Jerusalem, thousands would have been gathered celebrating another festival. The, festi- the Feast of the New Grain. It's a sort of harvest festival, and thousands were gathered in and around the temple. There was, however, a much smaller gathering, as the disciples of Jesus were praying in a private room nearby, following Jesus' instruction to them to wait and pray in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit to come upon them. But think for a moment how they must have felt. For three years, they had followed a Messiah. 
but he had socialised with the wrong people. He championed the wrong causes. He'd attracted the wrong kind of supporters and he'd wound up the wrong politicians. And ultimately, he died the wrong type of death, the death of a criminal. Certainly not the fitting end of a victor. But the story had not ended there. Three days later, Jesus rose from the dead and for 40 days he appeared to them, validating his life beyond the grave. Wow, they must have been confused. They simply could not join up the dots of all they had experienced. The emotional roller coaster, the dashing of expectations, and then the extraordinary death divine feats. And then the final disappearance of their master. Was this all a bad dream? Or was this just misplaced hope? Some, I'm sure, were thinking, how much longer have we got to pray in this hot upper room? Now, around nine o'clock that morning, in this private place near the temple, they suddenly experienced a phenomena that we now understand as the birth of the church and the coming of the Holy Spirit. But for them, in that moment, it was a violent rushing of wind and something like tongues of a fire appearing and resting upon each one of them. Acts 2.5 then suggests that they immediately rushed out of this place and were seen and heard amongst the crowds around the temple. As the Spirit moved them, and to their complete surprise, they were heard to be talking in many languages understood by the international gathering. Some mocked and jeered and, and called them drunk. Others wanted to know what was going on. So Peter, the leader, stands up and addresses the crowd, identifying this event as the promised age to come, as foretold in Joel 2, the outpouring of the spirit for all. Peter goes on and does not pull his punches as he explains it was the Jewish elite and the Roman authorities who had crucified God's chosen Messiah. From the very start, the message of the early church was both provocative and radical. The message of Christ and his spirit are for everyone, no matter what class, status, religion or background. His spirit is going to empower them, fill them and inspire them to live lives counter to the political, social and religious norms. The rest, as they say, is history. From day one, the spirit was a mover and a shaker. He moved them from their private place to the public forum and the crowd. He moved them from their Jewish centric faith to an all encompassing passion for everyone. He moved them from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. But not just that, the spirit shakes up all the norms. He turns things upside down. He shakes up all the barriers and all the brick walls. On that first Pentecost, where they were crowded around the temple, but his temple is not a building. His temple is at the very heart and soul of all who would follow him. Now, let's fast forward in history to May the 22nd, 2020, and explore the new paradigm. As we sit here today, we, like those first disciples, are somewhat dazed and confused, struggling to join up the dots of all that is happening to our world and piecing together the implications of COVID-19 and what it'll, how it will impact us today and tomorrow. Now let me explore these shifts in three main areas, societal, economic and personal. Firstly, our society for many years has been living under the mantra, you have never had it so good, live and let live. Life was powering along under the presumption that everything is possible, everything is achievable and everything is just fine, just fine. 
our main concern was how we possibly go to fit everything in, how we possibly take advantage of this wonderful, bountiful life. But as we sit here today, in the blink of an eye, the world got sick, our life got locked down, and all our certainties became uncertainty. This is real, it's ongoing. Nothing will be forever, but it is a recalibration. The ongoing threat of the virus and the way we interact together may reshape us for years to come. Secondly then, economically. Again, we've never had it so good. Global economies have been booming or at least self-sustaining. The stock market was at all times highs. Unemployment was at record lows. Now that's not to underestimate the incredible challenges and the awful inequities, but at least there was a sure and reliable economic environment to address these matters within. But today we face a global economic crisis. Trillions of debt, millions of unemployment, and millions of households thrown into economic uncertainty. The economic ramifications will severely impact businesses, pensions, taxes, church finances, charities, and personal finances for many years to come. Latest estimates are that there will be 6 million unemployed in the UK, with particular impact on the young and the lowly paid. Thirdly, personally, we have all been on an unexpected and for many crisis fuel journey in the last 10 weeks. Some of us, it's, it's quite a nice little bubble. Not a lot has really changed. It's sort of like an extended holiday at home. But for others, it's chaotic and painful. For some, they've experienced new positive steps, new creativity, more time with family. But for others, it's hassle, it's more fear, it's more grief and more physical and mental deprivation and a massive hit to personal well-being. In short, whether it's society, the economy, or our own personal journey, life changed in the blink of an eye. But the new norm will be here to stay. So then, how are we to think about the future? How might today's church develop to be ready for the new norm? So let's move forward to May the 22nd, AD 2021, and think how church might be in the future. Now let me start by exploring the passage we had read earlier. Jesus gives us some real insight into how we might live in a world of change from his story of the wineskins. Now Jesus said in Matthew 9, people do not pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst and the wine will run out and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins and both are preserved. Now, the traditional understanding of this parable is, is straightforward. Partially fermented new wine was stored in wineskins. But as the fermentation process continued, it produces gases and so stretched the wineskin, which was made of the hide of a goat. An old skin, which was no longer elastic, could not stretch for this new wine. So you needed to use new skins for this year's current wine production. It's a simple picture, but what is Jesus saying? Now, the usual sort of understanding of this parable can be summed up in the idea, out with the old, in with the new. If you want to take advantage of the new possibilities, you can't possibly put them inside old structures and old formats. And these verses have often been used as a sort of calling card for Christian movements 
seeking to break away from traditional structures. But maybe what Jesus is in fact saying is that he can't pour his new wine into our fixed, rigid, brittle and immovable hearts, minds and predispositions. Instead, we need to be pliable, adaptable and capable of allowing the fizz and the power of the spirit to transform us and take us onwards to a new place. He can't move us and shake us if we are rigid and fixed in our thinking. So for the global church, uh, we are facing a new situation. And we specifically at St Paul's are facing a new season as Ruth leads us. Now, a quick aside here, but we have been so privileged to have Ruth as our leader for six years. She has been amazing. She's moved us forward, she's shaken us up, and she's prepared us for the future. I wanted to do my own little tribute to her today, so first thing I'm gonna put on my hat, and secondly, I've got a little card for you, Ruth. Ruth Bushega, mover and shaker. So to conclude, I think we can be really excited about where we find ourselves as a church. I am excited about being a people of faith. We can spread faith, hope and love, not germs. I think we can get ready to become a newly shaped church for the new norm. But how can we do that if we can't even meet together? Currently, we cannot gather, we're dispersed and we're on the internet. But maybe in a strange way, that is a sign for future church. I saw a great post the other day and it said, the church has left the building. Clearly in the future, we will meet again, but maybe our outlook and our mindset will shift a bit. Some of it will be forced upon us through social distancing, but perhaps some of it will be that we will become an even more outwardly facing church. We sought to be a growing community of grace, but as we look forward, maybe it will be that we will be serving several communities of loosely connected, socially distanced communities, both inside and outside the church. Maybe we'll be making a difference beyond the wall, serving different communities with grace. Whether it's through ongoing online services, through neighbourly care, through maybe new social enterprise, a new focus on the vulnerable, a new work amongst the economically challenged, new support for our local net church network. We can be stepping forward into new needs, being Christ's hands and feet here in Dorking. So yes, maybe there will be less emphasis on large gatherings and less big celebrations, but maybe there'll be more church in the home, more church beyond the walls and more love and time for our neighbor. Whatever it might be, let's have the willingness and the openness, the agility and the flexibility to explore. So let us enter into this next season of our church life with our eyes wide open to the signs of the times, with our hearts and our minds agile and responsive to what the spirit is moving us towards. And let's be ready to be shaken up a bit. Amen.
Amen. Well, listen, we've come to the end of our service now. Um, I'm going to pray in a moment, a final prayer. Um, but before we do that, just a couple of things to let you know about. If what Simon has been talking about has really stirred you to think, I want to get involved, um, I really want to use this time of interregnum to uh, step into new things. Maybe God has been speaking to you. i uh, love to hear from you. Please do email either me alex at stpaulsdorking.org.uk or, or email the support email address uh, and we will uh, be in touch with you about ways in which we can be stepping up and stepping forward for God during this time. Um, also to remind you this Wednesday morning if you, if you enjoy joining us on a Sunday morning, Wednesday morning at 10am also on YouTube we have a midweek prayer service. It's only 15 minutes long. We read a Bible passage together, a quick reflection and we pray. So do come and join us Wednesday at 10am if you're free for that. And then finally just to let you know at the end of this service we're going to be having our prayer ministry. Uh, follow the details on the bottom of the screen or go to our website uh, and follow the links there and people will be waiting to pray with you at this end of this service. And then finally just to let you know right at the very end of this service don't switch off um, because we've got a little bit of a of a treat um, over the last couple of weeks we've asked you whether you would send in drawings or paintings or cards just as a way of saying thank you to Ruth um, and uh, and so you've done that and thank you so much for all of you that have sent things in if you couldn't don't worry don't stress um, just pray for her that would be brilliant um, and so as we finish our service, we're going to be showing some of those cards and drawings at the end. And over the top of that, we're going to be playing a song uh, that Kate Flanders, uh, a member of our congregation, wrote uh, and sang in church a few months ago. A really beautiful song. So we really hope that you enjoy both the music and the cards as well. Well, listen, as we come to the end of our Pentecost service, uh, I'd love to pray uh, that God would fill you and empower you with his Holy Spirit. This is a prayer from the, um, the church, uh, the Anglican uh, liturgy book, and uh, I'm just going to leave a couple of pauses in between them. It might help you just to close your eyes, 
to have your hands open and in a posture to receive, do as you like. And may I just pray God's blessing on you and ask that God would pour his Holy Spirit on us uh, to fill us and encourage us. God poured out his promised Holy Spirit in tongues of flame on the day of Pentecost. You have been baptised with the Spirit and with the fire. So may that same Holy Spirit fill you and empower you today. And so as we sit here, come Holy Spirit, we ask, come Holy Spirit, come and fill us up. Fill us up with the power of your life and your light. Set our hearts on fire for you. May that same Holy Spirit send you out to tell his story and give you a voice to glorify God before all people. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all who you love now and forever. Amen.
canción 